We are counting down to this afternoon when President Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping will meet face to face for the first time in a year. The two will be meeting at the APAC Economic Summit in San Francisco. They're expected to talk about issues like trade, climate change, but also Ukraine and Israel. The two countries, they've historically had a pretty complicated relationship and recently it has felt as tense as ever. So what we can expect out of this meeting that'll be taking place about 25 miles south of San Francisco, I wanna bring in Harley Lippman, a foreign policy expert and an advisory board member on the US Agency for International Developments Partnership for Peace. Harley, thanks so much for taking the time to be here on a, on a pretty big day. I wanna start first with what President Biden said yesterday ahead of this meeting. Let's take a listen. We're not trying to decouple from China, but we're, what we're trying to do is change the relationship for the better. From my perspective, if in fact the Chinese people who are in trouble right now economically, but I'm not going to continue to sustain the support for positions where if we want to invest in China, we have to turn over all our trade secrets. There's a lot to unpack heading into this meeting, but I think for, for most people at home who aren't following the day-to-day -day geopolitics of the world, what should that person expect from this meeting today? Well, I think a little context is required, and that is from the Chinese perspective, they feel they're like the little guys that have earned the right to sit at the table equally with the United States and feel that the United States looks down on them, shows disdain, that the United States dominates everything, and they resent that deeply. That's their perspective. From the American perspective, the concern is that they're playing nice, but the Chinese are trying to fool us. They're really our enemy, and they're playing to win, nothing else. And they're, and they're playing into what they perceive as an appeasement policy of Biden, and that the United States needs to be firmer with China to make sure that keeps stability and peace in the region. So and, insofar as, yeah, Oh, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. So insofar as what we could expect, well, there are a number of things. I think it's an opportunity for the United States to reassert its role as a leader in the world, to champion democracy and human rights. It's an opportunity for the United States to speak about fair trade and the right of intellectual property. The Chinese steal intellectual property. People, American companies that go to China find that extremely difficult to do business. Their offices are raided by the Chinese government. Uh, their, their information is stolen. It's become extremely difficult to work with China. They've always had that policies. And lastly, it's an opportunity for the United States to ask for greater transparency on global issues like health and COVID. I think those are all really important topics. It, one for me as well that I think hits home for, for a lot of families that are watching is fentanyl. I mean, it's had, it's had an impact in so many communities uh, across the United States, and they're expected to talk about ways to stop the flow of fentanyl. That does come from China, but from your perspective, is China serious about actually taking that issue on? <laughs> well, the criticism is that it's like asking the fox to watch the hen house. And that's the criticism that says it's not going to be stopped by China. Even though, interestingly enough, Senator Schumer, when he met with the leader of China, he said, if you really want to improve relations with the United States, that's the most important, tangible thing you could do. On the other hand, maybe we could put incentives and disincentives in place to make sure, indeed, that they do things to prevent resources that are coming from China that create this fentanyl crisis in the United States that's truly a horror. I mean, I, I had my own brother who had a, a fatal attack because of this. So, uh, you know, you can't get more personal than that. And I really hope that something is done. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear uh, about your brother. Um, why would they even, you know, kind of put this on the list of topics they're going to talk about? There's really nothing that they can do. Well, again, if there's some way to measure and monitor it, remember, as Reagan would say, trust but verify. If there's a way that we can do that so that we have to say to the Chinese that there's a lot of skepticism, so we need to verify indeed that you're you're not sending it overseas to the United States, um, then I think you can make progress. It all depends on how willing the Chinese are to reassuring us and doing things that will improve relations with the United States. And, and if you're President Biden today, uh, you're sitting at that table across from you as President Xi. Uh, another topic is going to be China's relationship with Russia, which has grown closer in recent months. What would be your message to the Chinese president about that topic? 
I think that uh, I would say to the president of China that if you really want to have peace and for us to have better relations, he, he has to rein in Russia because the only power that really has great influence over Russia is China. And as we know, if fighting stop, if Russia stops fighting, everything remains the same and no one will die. If Ukraine stops fighting, Ukraine disappears. So China has the leverage to put pressure on Russia to come to the peace table and work out something with Ukraine so we can end this war. I think that's a, a really important point. It's going to be interesting to hear what they have to say later in the evening uh, when President Biden is expected to speak publicly about uh, what he and President Xi talked about. Foreign policy expert Harley Lippmann, uh, thanks for your input today. We appreciate it. Thank you.